And that's the other part with, with the soldiering that um, I think it was George Washington at the end of the Revolutionary War where he talks about how much, um, like the Newbury affair, where he kind of, how much the war had impacted the exposure to the environment, uh, environment weather condition had impacted his health. And um, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but it does seem that that's something that we haven't studied as much with the Civil War either, is that how much does weather, like the exposure to constant rain, the exposure to cold, freezing temperatures in winter, the lack of proper fires to kind of keep you warm in winter, how much does that affect the soldiers' well, sure. physical capabilities? There's, there's no way it was good for them. There is no way that they came out of the war healthier, at least in the long run. All of this exposure had to be bad for them. And then you throw in the things we know about, like the high-carb diets, mm -hmm. which probably didn't help their, their hearts in the years to come. You know, the example I think about, though, I heard a wonderful paper a few years ago um, from, from Barbara Gannon about a topic that nobody wants to talk about, chronic diarrhea. Chronic <laughs> diarrhea, you know, it's the biggest killer of the war yeah. starting in 1862. It is. We, we need to talk about that. And why are they getting chronic diarrhea? Well, in some cases, it's because they're using improper latrines and they're not cleaning their camps. But in a lot of cases, it's because of this bad water they're encountering. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there's a case where even those who survived would have been dealing with um, intestinal problems, in some cases, the rest of their lives. Yeah. Because of what they had been drinking or cooking in during the war. Um, I don't think we have numbers. It would be interesting. I mean, you really have to start parsing numbers. You, you're, you could probably find enough cases in the Union archives to get a rough guess of how many men drowned in floods or were struck by lightning or froze to death out on picket. But when you start talking about the, the connection between weather and, and disease, it's, it's necessarily going to be trickier. But I certainly think there had to be that connection. And it had to last. And it had to affect men. For a long time after the war. Many years ago, I edited a memoir of a federal soldier named Marcus Woodcock, and he suffered with chronic diarrhea the rest of his life hmm. because of what he experienced in the Western theater during the war. There, there were a lot of men. Yeah, and it sort of reminds me that I, I had um, Sarah Handley Cousin on like one of my last interviews on Zoom, and how the story of Joshua Shambling and how he had like that wounds that eventually killed him. like. Like we sometimes say, it, it it doesn't necessarily have to be the ones that kills you immediately, but sometimes it takes a long time. And it seems like that's something what we have here too with weather exposure. Um, 